so welcome to Thrive, Marcus. I'm just so excited to have you on today. Um, and, you know, during this time together, like especially uh, during the pandemic and COVID-19 and what's going on, I always like to start off conversations by just asking, you know, what's helping you thrive during this time and what are some things that are, are you know, helping keep your livelihood up and, and running? That's awesome. Uh, Anu, first of all, thank you so much for having me. Uh, I'm super excited to be here and to have this conversation today. Um, yeah, COVID's, COVID's been an interesting time for, for everyone. And you can see people who have gone both sides of this path. And for me, uh, there was a point in COVID, it was a real turning point in my life, actually, where I was, I was, I was having a pity party feeling real bad for myself, getting worried, you know, is, is the world ending? Is my business going to be taken from me? Is everything going to be gone? And I thought, you know, there's going to be people who make the best out of this though. There are going to be brilliant people out there who, who do great things during COVID. And instantly I went, wait a minute, I'm not a bench warmer. I am that guy I'm talking about. And that was the turning point for me where I went, I'm going to do something with this. And for me, where I've really found my niche, if you will, is I, I love helping other people. And through helping other people, it feels so good. Uh, most people haven't necessarily found that in their lives yet, but the more you give, the more you get. And um, through COVID, I've just been focused on helping the people around me. And, you know, particularly my staff, we have a great group of people in this building. And I just wanted to make sure, you know, my number one goal is that they get through COVID with their mental health intact. And ideally, even better than it was pre-COVID. And if I can do that thing, I will consider it very successful. And that turned into something much bigger. And I, I, I've been working with helping many other people through it and just keeping that positive mindset. And here we are, it's really starting to feel like it's, it's getting close to the end. We're starting to see a light at the end of the tunnel. There is a light at the end of the tunnel. And uh, it's going to be an amazing few months here. I just, I love that because, um, you know, I just love the enthusiasm and energy that's coming through you. And that's something that I had mentioned even before introducing you that it really says something about an individual. And I, it leads me to my next question, which wanted to, to kind of inquire a little bit more about, you know, um, in my experience, I usually find uh, when you're motivated or when you make a change in your life, especially that's in service, when you're serving other people, it generally comes from like a, a point in your life where there was a turning point where something had happened or a situation in which um, your will and, and your desire is to help others. And so that's interesting that you had pointed out that there was like another um, experience of that sort with yourself during COVID. And so I wanted to ask you was what initially inspired you to even begin in in such a business and in such an industry? And what was your inspiration? Oh, I, I love the leading question, to be honest. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's, it, it really comes down to my why. And uh, I had a really rough childhood. Um, I'm, a, I'm a product of a, uh, of a divorced family, of a broken family. And I won't get into airing uh, family dirty laundry, but uh, we had really, really rough stuff happen in our lives. And that shaped me for many years. Um, it led to me living with my mother who had to raise four children, who had to go back to school, who had to work full time. So it left me to fend for myself. And I had really poor nutrition. Uh, I was six foot four and a half at 120 pounds. And if people don't recognize how bone rack skinny that is, it was bad. And uh, for me, I, I really, I got bullied pretty hard and I believed everything those bullies said about me. You know, they called me all those names and I believed it. And of course the girls wouldn't look at you and the bullies loved you too much. I was so fortunate because eventually my path led me into the gym and in the gym, I transformed overnight and obviously not physically because I'm still working on that one, but mentally I liked who I was. I had self-confidence. I had self-worth and literally overnight, Bullies start to leave me alone because they don't like people with confidence. They don't go after those guys. Right away, girls started to notice me and I was, I hadn't changed yet physically. And I was like, how is this possible? And I realized at that moment, this is what I'm, this is what God has put me on this planet to do. I'm going to help others get off their sad path. I was on such a sad path that would have led, led to such a horrible life, but through a little change, everything was better. 
And uh, it, was, it was at that moment I, I just started and, and people started to recognize the difference. I'm like, what's going on with you? And, and what are you doing? And, and then I started to get really into supplements because, you know, I, I was this bone rack skinny kid. I remember riding on my BMX bike with a 15 pound weight gainer that I just rode my bike halfway across Richmond to pick this thing up at a gym. There was like this hardcore gym because that's, that's the only people who sold that stuff back in the day. And I'm riding my bike with this bad boy home. And I was known as the supplement guy. And uh, I started my first supplement business uh, out of my bedroom. I invested every penny I had. And I had about $15,000 of supplements on my wall. And my buddies would come by and they'd sit on my bed and they'd I'd just tell them what to take and how to take it. And we were in this together and it was awesome. And my my friends always joke that those were my healthy drug dealer years because people would be paging me and they'd come over at all hours of the night to pick up their supplements. And, and that was great. And, uh, and I mean, I'm sure later in the conversation, we'll talk about how that led to where I am today. I, you know, there's so many things that I picked up on uh, while you were talking and I always make it a habit of making notes, but I was just so intrigued to hear. So I'm trying to remember it all. But one thing that really stood out about what you said was um, that makes me wonder, like you knew intuitively kind of um, where your path was in that sense of like that you wanted to serve and you wanted to make other people feel better and, and get that opportunity to make that chance and shift in their lives where, you know, it's kind of like a paradigm shift where you're, you're changing the perspective of being like a victim of a situation and then becoming victor yeah. of it. Yeah. And uh, oh, I always love that, you know, and, and I wonder is it's always interesting for me to inquire, like, was there anybody that you looked up to for that inspiration or was that something that came from within and, and what was that really? Are you able to share more about that? Absolutely. You know, first of all, I love what you just said. The, uh, from victim to victor that's so beautiful and that is um, that's something I focus on with a lot of people that I work with uh, we all have a story we all have a reason to feel sorry for ourselves and to feel and or play that victim card every one of us every one of us has something super crappy in their lives that you have every right to play it. and I try and teach people tell me the benefit of playing it tell me anything you get out of playing that card and I've never heard a good answer. There's not, you get a little sympathy from people. Is that what you want? Is that, was that your ultimate goal? You got a little bit of sympathy and then people walked away. I love to turn whatever your story is into your reason to succeed. Take that and go, I'm going to succeed in spite of that. I wasn't born with a golden spoon in my mouth. I didn't have millions of dollars of family money that I turned into a million plus $1. No, I had a crap story and I'm going to turn it into something spectacular. So that, that, that's something for everybody. You know, there were definitely people along my path who helped me turn that corner, who helped put something in my ear and not even all of them were positive. And I won't, I won't tell you who the negative people were, but there were people along that path who were like, who, who were important people in my life. Uh, let's, I'll just say coaches. I had coaches along the way who essentially said to me, you're not going to do anything with your life. And that, that motivated me even more. I'm like, wow, that you had a real chance to, to, to do something positive in my life. And even your negativity, I'm going to take it. I'm going to turn that into positivity. So you, you just really have to change your filters too. Like when stuff comes in, you know, even today, sure. I still get some negativity coming at me and I just go, you know what? That's not about me. What you're saying, that's not about me. That's about stuff going on with you because you you clearly don't know me. If you're going to spit that kind of negativity at me, you know nothing about me. So I, I have mercy on people and I sympathize and I don't I don't take that here. I go, I, I hope one day you can be helped. That's beautiful. You know, and it's it just um, as a yoga teacher and I also uh, practice Ayurveda and one of the principles of that is really practicing ahimsa which is not just no violence everywhere that you look but it's almost like just looking at also the violence within the words that we speak and the things that we say and the narratives that go on inside of our heads and um something to bring it back to what you had said that 
you had mentioned that early on in your childhood, like it was just even bringing your focus towards nutrition and things that you were eating. And then that really cued into a, a practice of mine because even for myself, like I never really paid so much attention to nutrition in the ways that I was eating. But my God, once I started looking at the aspects of like food is medicine and what this can do to just empower yourself. And that also played a mind in like my perspective of things. Well, you know, a lot of people in your network are taking on the Marcus Challenge, and that really intrigued my interest. So I'm wondering if you can share with us what the Marcus Challenge is about. Oh, thank you for asking. I, I love the Marcus Challenge so much. Uh, the Marcus Challenge was started, I, I, I never thought it was going to be anything like it was. This was not some grand plan of mine. I just noticed early on in COVID, especially when I had my turning moment, my turning point, I saw so much negativity clouding the people who I love and mental health deteriorating like crazy, um, physical health deteriorating like crazy. And I thought, you know what, I'm going to create a community that there's zero negativity. It's all positivity. It's all encouragement. It's all love, which I believe people need more than ever. And all I do on this Marcus challenge, it's on my Instagram page and I just give little tips and tricks little hacks, if you will, for better mindset, for better dieting, for better all that. And I, I, I shouldn't use the word dieting because I know dieting has bad connotations. It's more eating habits and lifestyle choices, but I really get into the mind mechanics of things. And just those little tinkerings of, of changing your filter, changing your focus, just keeps people positive. But then most importantly, when people join the Marcus Challenge, and there's no cost or anything like that, it's just all you gotta do is watch the video, try the challenge, and you just, you let us know how it's going. Me and my community surround them with so much encouragement and love that most people are just not used to. You look at the average person on Instagram and everybody wants that social media feel, right? Like you post something and I get, I want likes and I want comments. But the truth is most people don't get them. You know, the average person might get two comments and they might get 20 likes or something like this. When you post any comment in the Marcus challenge about how you're trying out the challenges or I'm in, I'm part of the challenge, they get 20 plus comments of, of love and encouragement. And every single post, I'll, I'll read the comments and somebody will be like, I'm in tears over the encouragement I'm receiving. I, like, I don't have this in my life right now. And I'm so thankful for this. So we've brought together these people who all need it. We all need it, but there's just so much love to give. And the more love you give, the more love you get and the better you feel about yourself. And it's not just inward focus of, yeah, but you don't know what's going on with my life. And no, I don't. But the more you give love to someone else, the more you can go, you know what? I actually feel better about how I'm doing. Oh, I just, I love- So that's the I Marcus could... Challenge. I love everything about it. You know, it's just, it's really healing from the inside out. And I think that's such a beautiful thing that you're sharing with people. And, you know, I was just, my next question was to ask you about what challenges did you encounter during um, your training and just your business when it comes to COVID-19. But one thing that I heard from what you had said um, that you really wanted to create was that community and, and fill it up with so much love. And so I, I was wondering and curious about this. Was that something that you, you found was a challenge early on? And that's why you wanted to share that with other people so they don't feel that sense of a lack of community? Yes, absolutely. I mean, we're, 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 so many people are being locked in their homes right now, imprisoned, if you will. And in that prison, it's really tough to feel any connection. And, you know, I think one of the moments for me that I realized how much the world would need this is when I started to feel like I was mentally struggling. I consider myself someone who's very mentally strong. I don't, I don't mean to sound braggy about that. It's just, that's, that's kind of been my thing all my life. I, I know who I am and I know my mental strength. I started to struggle and I went, wow, if I'm struggling, I can't imagine what the average person is doing out there. And I just thought, you know what, Marcus, this, God isn't, God didn't put you here to be a, a whiny guy who's, who's feeling sorry for himself get up off your seat and help the people who need it the most and they need it more than ever. And the other thing I recognize is, you know, in the times in my life back in the day when I was in my worst, the people who were around to lift me up and boost me up. And even today, if I ever have bad days, you know, I owe so much to my pastor. Uh, pastor Brian is, is, is my, my top mentor. 
um, he, he not only lifts me up, but he also keeps me in check. He's, he's always, he, he, I'll never forget the first time he said to me, Marcus, one of the most important things is for you not to believe your own hype. Uh, so the people who are there for just thought, this is the time I have the opportunity to help people when they absolutely need it the most. Well, you know, it's just, it sounds not only just having like a strong mindset of what you embody, but it's also a lot of self-awareness. And, you know, that's a practice that I find um, is a day-to-day moment-by-moment practice that you have to cultivate. And so I find that, you know, not only is it like such a blessing that you have somebody who, like yourself, who's an expert and also like hosting such a community to feel safe and to feel Um, not so isolated amongst one another. And I think that's really beautiful. But I I wanted to ask you how crucial or like what aspect do you think self-awareness has when it comes to um, achieving success in your life and and your goals? That's a a very profound question. I I believe it's very important. You need to recognize your own strengths, your own weaknesses. Without self-awareness, it's hard to recognize what, where you're going and on your path and where you are on your path. So daily reflection is very important. Uh, I always get asked you know, things like, how do you stay focused? How do you stay positive? I'll tell you the number one recommendation that I give to everybody. Every single day, start your day with thankfulness. So I take 10 to 20 minutes every single day without fail in thankfulness. So for me, it's prayer. I'm a godly man, so it's prayer for me, but it doesn't have to be prayer for everyone. Somebody might be, oh, I don't believe in God. Okay, no problem. You just be thankful. Be thankful to whoever you want to be thankful for or just spend some time thinking about all the things you're grateful for. If you start every day that way, it's really hard to get off on a negative path. How do you go from going, I'm so thankful for my health, for my family, for the ones I love, for this, for that, for this, and then go, and now let's go hate people today. And no, it puts you on such a beautiful path that if your mind starts off that way, here's the other beautiful thing. And this is what people forget and don't realize the beautiful power of routine. Because I know tomorrow I need to start my day the exact same way. And I don't want to just say the same crap every time. I don't, I don't want to just list off, okay, back to my family, my health. No. I want to think of something new to be grateful for every day and to thank God. Thank you for doing this for me. Thank you for these blessings. Well, then I'm watching all day long for the blessings so that I can talk about them tomorrow. Do you know what wonderful people that creates when you're just looking around? Like, I'm so thankful for this interview. I'm so thankful for getting to know you and your positivity is just I'm soaking it up right now. And I know the people watching are, are going to be, are going to be appreciating you and, and listening to me and going, Hey, you know, I'm going to give some of these things a try. Cause there's something about this guy that, uh, that, that rings true. Absolutely. It's just, you know, and what I feel like you embody is that authenticity and, and that's such a beautiful thing to embody, um, especially now. And just to be, um, allowing other people to feel whole within themselves, you know, and I I always find that my question was going to be, what is your best advice? But you just shared it in that beautiful response. And I just love that so much. So again, I want to thank you for that. And just before we end it off, um, if you can tell us more about Magnum Nutraceuticals, I'm very curious. I'd love to. I'd love to. Thank you. Um, I started Magnum uh, 16 and a half years ago. Uh, what I recognized is there was a need for a company that had nothing but integrity and nothing but people's best interest in mind. And now you guys already know my why. So you recognize that I'm not the kind of guy that's, okay, now how do I make as much money off this thing as possible? That, that was never my goal. My goal is to help human beings. That's what I believe I am put on this earth. It's not what I believe. I know I'm put on this earth to do. So I started Magnum 16 and a half years ago with just one principle integrity in everything we do. I knew that if integrity was our guiding light, we were going to make products that people were drawn to and they were going to see better results and just love how they feel on this stuff. So Magnum is just uh, sports nutrition supplements and health supplements that help people get more out of their life, get more out of their gym experience, get more out of their work experience. And, uh, and we just love what we do. I I've, I've got a community of people who love this fitness lifestyle who aren't just in it for a good body or a good body for one day to get on stage and then don't talk about my body anymore. 
This isn't even necessarily about how you look. This is about how you feel. I want to, I want to, I want to be part of people's lifelong experience of, of feeling healthy, feeling good about themselves and having the great energy to play with their kids, play with their grandkids, still make love when they're in their seventies. Like these are, these are crazy goals. I know, but it, it's stuff you can do. And, um, and I, I just, I, I love what I do. And one last thing I want to say about the Marcus challenge, by the way, for anybody listening, you are all welcome into the Marcus challenge. Just go on to my Instagram page, go to any of the last videos and, and just watch a video and, and you'll get a taste of what this is about. This is what I do every week. Leave a comment below that says, I'm in, I want to be part of this community. And you watch how quickly this community comes around you. And I want to be really clear. The community is not just Marcus. I, this is way beyond me. This is way bigger than me. And this is a group of people who all have the same focus. And I hope you guys will also be part of my community and be part of my leadership community where one day you're going to go, you know what? I'm going to look through some of these other comments and I'm going to, I'm going to give some encouragement to these other people who are also in a bad place. And we're going to do it together. We're going to lift each other up and we're going to feel so good about things. And you watch how quickly that spreads all throughout your life. And all of a sudden you're, you're being better to your spouse. You're being better to your kids. You're doing better at work. It's a beautiful positivity spread. And I want you to be part of it with me. Oh, thank you so much for that. That was awesome, Marcus. Um, you know, just I, I wanted to end off by saying people always uh, not so much remember what you say, but they definitely will remember how you made them feel. And just this conversation today has just left on such a high vibe note. And, um, you know, I'm just excited to share this with the viewers because um, where can they find you online if you can just share your handles and stuff? Because I'd love for the community to get involved with yourself. Oh, thank you so much. Uh, at Marcus Collius, so it's just my name, all spelled properly, <laughs> which I'm sure we'll, you'll have a problem finding the spelling, but I'm sure it'll be in the link or whatever. Yeah. But it's at Marcus Collius. Uh, Instagram is my thing. Unfortunately, my time just got too tied up to be spending time on Facebook anymore. So Instagram is where you'll find me there. Um, at Magnum Sups, at Magnum, S-U-P-P-S -P -P -S is, is uh, our, our Magnum handle. You can also find uh, magnumsups.com if you want to learn more about the products. Uh, YouTube, the same thing. And I, I used to put up a lot of videos on, on YouTube. Um, they're, they're still great videos if you want to learn more about uh, workouts and about training. I was younger then and I was a little more off the handle, but uh, I'm sure you guys will enjoy the energy. And um, again, that's just Marcus Collius uh, for my YouTube channel as well. Awesome. Thank you so much, Marcus. It has been great. Uh, Anu, thank you so much for having me. And uh, I appreciate it. I appreciate your energy and uh, God bless you and what you're doing. Thank you.